Are you looking to frame, insulate, and line a shipping container? Want to use something better than wood 2x4 studs? Follow us along in this video as we use CSM brackets, strut channel framing, spray foam insulation, and the white PVC reline car wash panels that we love. Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Channing McCorston, the container guy. In this video, we'll allow you to follow along step-by-step step as we perform a unique customer modification. This customer has elected to use our modular interior systems. We love this framing system. It provides you a fully modular interior envelope and then you can install anything anywhere inside using the strut channel. We've already installed the man door. We'll hone in on how the half glass is installed in this video. A couple other things we'll do is we'll be installing two access hatches, one in the container door, the other in the back end. These insulated fire rated hatches will allow the customer to pull cabling through the container, work on it, couple it, and then back out the other end. So they can work on things that are much longer than 20 feet inside this heated enclosed structure. So there's different glass options for the doors. We typically offer a sight glass, which is just the smaller glass portion that allows you to see in and out. And then there's the half glass, which is pretty much half the door. You can see it is a large window going in here. So you gotta be very careful where you're cutting that you leave some structure to the door. And because this door has panic hardware on the inside, we have to be very careful that we leave enough room for the lip of the frame for the glass. If you want a full in-depth video on how to install this window in a man door, check out our installation video linked above and in the description below. So we just got our order of uh, strut strapping in. This is revision two. What this stuff is, is it's strapping that wraps around the strut channel. This provides us a flange now. So once we strut line a container, we have this nice flange here that we can secure. You could either plywood line in between the strut or we're gonna be using a reline panel. It's like a car wash panel, it's beautiful. So we gotta drill through the back of the strut and rivet uh, these straps to each length of strut. And then it'll all install normally with our uh, CSM brackets. So for this job here, we're uh, really excited to be using our blast resistant CSM brackets. So these will install, they're a one piece unit rather than the two to make them a bit stronger and they stick out a bit further. So that allows for a full two inches of foam to get all the way around the strut and the flange that's left afterwards. So we're so swamped with mods right now that we actually have our electricians here and they're framing this container with the strut line system here. The strut strapping's now all riveted to the strut channel. They're cut in place and then they just have to pre-drill and thread cutting screw right into that strut channel. One thing to note here, and it's kind of important, and I'll show you is with these corner castings here, once you put two inches of spray foam around there, you either gotta build your wall out away from the end wall to clear that so that you don't have uh, an area that's condensating, or you need to bring your roof down far enough so that you can get two inches of foam all the way around that casting and have a nice vapor barrier. We're about to install the access hatch frames. And before we do that, we need to weld the door shut and remove the lock rods. And one thing to note is right now we're not sitting level. So this corner casting, you can actually see, yeah, it's inch and a half off the ground. So we need to lift this container up, get it nice and level, make sure that the doorway is all square, and then we'll jump inside, weld the door shut, and then finish off welding this lockbox here. It's been a while since customers have asked us to weld the door shut on a shipping container. If you've been following my channel and watching the videos, you know that I am not a fan of welding on shipping containers. So we've developed a bolt the container doors shut kit, which will allow us to do this much cleaner and easier in the future. Now that we've removed the door handles, we're just gonna cut out the rough openings for the access hatches and drop these panels. Then we'll test fit them and see how they look. So you've watched us uh, remove the lock rods on the outside of the doors, and we've uh, filled the holes with bolts so that when we spray foam, nothing flies through the door. We've also touched up uh, the beautiful paint that we burnt by welding these doors shut, and then it's get on to steel studding these. So uh, we'll start with the tracks, floor and ceiling, and then start working out our spacing. We really need to make sure that the stud ends up at the same level as our galvanized 
frames for the, uh, the access hatches. And then also on the sides here, we need to make sure we have backing so that we can install the reline panel both on this flange and then we have something here after spray foam to secure that reline panel too. I'd just like to point out, we love using steel studs, not wooden studs, because they're always straight and they're super light. Like just to demonstrate here, like with one hand, I can hold a bundle of 10 steel studs. So uh, there's no way, I know I'm strong and all, but there's no way I'd be able to do that with 10 wooden two by fours. So these are in two and a half inch steel studs. So it also saves us one inch of interior room on either end. So the steel studs, they got these loops for electrical and the, uh, the stiffener bars. And then the tracks, you'll have to buy track as well. So this goes on the bottom and the top. And so this doesn't have any of those holes in it. And it's actually just slightly wider so that the stud uh, fits in. And then you can either use screws to screw right through and clamp these, or there's actually a fancy tool that allows you just to crimp it. And then it, uh, yeah, it crimps the track to the stud and you don't have to worry about you know, using self tappers, especially when you use the thicker steel studs, it's actually quite difficult. So the thinner gauge like this, because we're spray foaming it and locking it in place anyway, uh, it's pretty easy to screw through and uh, we'll probably do a mix of both clamping and screwing, so we'll show you both. One thing to note about steel studs is if you're planning on using the stiffener bars, uh, you need to make sure that they're all at the, the, the same height to actually get the stiffener bar through it. So uh, you always gotta be measuring either from the top down or the bottom up. Uh, and make sure that, yeah, you're, you're always doing that consistently, cutting in the right spot. And so for this one here, I think we measured 89 and a quarter. And so I'll always have to be making sure that now I'm measuring from the end that has the electrical grommet hole and working my way back and cutting this excess off so that, yeah, all my holes are neatly lined up. A lot of people are kind of nervous to work with steel studs because they're used to wood and they've used wood all their lives, but with steel studs, it's so light and you can kind of slowly dry fit everything before even uh, securing it all together. And once you've done it once, well then now you have experience with it and you can do it. So I encourage everyone to give it a try uh, with your next container mod project. So here, uh, the track's kind of in place. You just insert your stud and turn and then this is that crimping tool that I was talking about. So it, you can just it just punches the two sheets of metal together and, and holds them in place. So I have the top and bottom track and side studs uh, secured together, but just loose. And so now if we're happy with the way everything looks, we'll just make sure we got it all squared up. We can secure the tracks to the floor and the ceiling and then mark either 16 inches on center or 24 inches on center, whatever you'd like to do for securing your wall covering. Now placing all the inner studs is pretty easy. And just remember these steel studs are non-structural. So you don't need crazy headers and footers above your, your windows and your doors and all that stuff. This is just meant to hold the wall covering that's coming in this container. We will be posting a full in-depth tutorial on how to still stud a container. So make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss that video. Originally on this project, these access hatches were meant to be on both sides of the end wall and not in the container doors in the end wall. So the workbench would be right here and that's where they'd work. And uh, if that was still the case, we really wanted to try out strut lining the end wall and coming up with a method of rounding the corner with the reline panels. But that's not the case now. The customer had a change of heart. And so we are stuck with the uh, steel studs on the end wall here, which uh, we still like, but spray foamer is coming here shortly. And I need to make sure that he's all trained up on where I want him to uh, insulate, especially the tight areas and where I do not want foam. So. Uh, make sure you walk around with your spray foam contractor, the guy who's actually spraying, let them know exactly, you know, uh, what your plans are, how you're finishing it, and then make sure that they're taping off all the, the front faces of the studs and the strut channel so that none of that is all covered in foam.
Well, spray foamers finished up. It looks like they did an awesome job. They have all these strut channel locked into the foam. So now it's nice and solid. And they've also locked in all the steel studs on the end wall. So the next step is to install the access hatches. I'll also be installing our reline wall panels between the struts and on the end walls. And the electrician and plumber will be finishing up the uh, air conditioner, the mini split unit on the back end wall. So given the customer has requested these access hatches, we've uh, developed the special frame. And now that it's all spray foamed on the inside, comes time we need to install the access hatch itself. So here we have an insulated, it's actually fire rated hatch that will install nicely in the frame. You can go, you know, swing either to the right or the left, uh, fit in well there. And then we're just gonna run a bead of silicone just to make sure that it's all sealed up. And we're just gonna drill some holes evenly and then rivet this thing in place. We figured these access hatches were gonna be kind of a one of for this project, but uh, we actually just had a diamond driller customer walk through the yard, see them and order one for putting pipe through. So maybe there is demand. If there is, leave uh, any comments below of whether you're looking for a product similar to this and uh, people are looking for it. I guess we can always make it, throw it on our website and have it available for you to purchase small enough that we can ship kind of anywhere on the planet. So to give you an idea of these panels, it's a hollow honeycomb style structure, so uh, that adds durability to it. And it's about a quarter inch thick. And this is a PVC panel. Uh, I think it's classy fire rated. It's good for a two hour fire rated wall system when it's applied against a cement wall, like a basement or a car wash building. Uh, it has the nailing flange up here. So with this, all we're gonna connect with is the two corners of the tabs that are left on our strut strapping. We have the J-channel. Uh, so that J-channel installs to the strapping and then you just start sliding and interlocking each piece. So I'll just play a Lego here and show you how these kind of go together. And so we love that finish. It's so easy. This thing can be pressure washed afterwards. So nice and bright and white. And so it reflects the light very well. And then you got the super durable strut channel that's completely modular and you can install anything anywhere in this container. So this right here is our dream envelope. This is the dream finish. A lot of what I've been working towards for the last two years has been working towards this goal. So our window kits, our Mandor kits, the, the CSM brackets, uh, the way that we strut line the strut strapping, uh, utilizing these reline wall panels this is all working towards getting this envelope right here and it's going to be so useful for engineers to walk into this thing now and build a wastewater treatment plant or a potable water plant or an electrical contractor to install uh, all panels and transformers and switch gear and or MCC shacks. So this is my best version of a prototype of this wall system. We'll hopefully be able to start pumping these out and even potentially pre-building these and stocking these because we get so many requests for the same thing. The only real variance is like where the customer actually wants the door and that's the kicker from stocking it. And so on the end walls, we've steel stud framed them normally and then relined wall paneled. We had to make sure that we installed backing up where the uh, the head unit for the mini split AC heat pump is going. So that's going to be installed shortly. One thing that even electricians or contractors, they're concerned about with uh, container construction is where are they gonna enter in with their, either their wiring or their, uh, their plumbing. And a lot of times people want us to uh, weld in pipes or couplers or something so that it's easy for them to run through. But if you're to, We've done that and, and to weld in a, like a heavy wall steel pipe. Now we have to frame around that, spray foam around that, finish around that. And then furthermore, now you have steel on the outside, uh, transferring cold to the inside of your, your building and that's gonna condensate throughout the winter. So the walls are only 1.6 millimeters thick. If you're an electrician, your hole saw bit, you're not gonna wreck it going through this wall as long as you oil your bit and you can punch a hole kind of anywhere you want afterwards. Just make sure you don't hit a stud, bring your wires in that way, 
and then just duct seal or foam insulate that hole, you know, around the wire that you've drilled to bring your utilities in. So that right there is our favorite way to frame, insulate, and line a shipping container. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our channel and ring that notification bell. And as always, check us out at tcg.ca. Hope you learned something.